the movie and plan open my eyes and I see clearly now things that I never knew before and I am prepared to fight for the lives of those little humans. This movie is life changing no matter what your views are. The ugly truth of abortion is exposed yet God's mercy brings hope and healing. Before this film, I called myself pro-life. thought I felt very passionately about the cause, but after seeing this film, <laughs> I realized I was not doing enough. And um, my plan is to do way more, to get way more involved with 40 Days for Life. If I had to say one thing about Unplanned, this film just woke me up. I'll never forget the day that Abby Johnson walked into my office left this building and and drove down drove into our parking lot just you know a hundred yards that way and walked in it was october 5th of 2009 and so many people have asked me over the years certainly with the movie coming out you know what, what was it like when you saw her you know what was that moment like and you know i was in my office just like in the movie abby johnson is in the other room here. You know, I walked down and I said a short prayer of give me the wisdom to listen. Rough day at the office. You can say that. And then she told me what she saw. And I'll never forget, you know, for so many years, you know, we would get there at, at 6.30 in the morning, Mary Lisa and I, and, and when we were in college and, and newly married and before we had kids and, and with little kids and, and all these other wonderful volunteers that came out, and we would come and see Abby Johnson come in and swipe her security card, and then the abortionists would arrive and they would do 30 or 40 abortions, and that was just routine for years. And I'll never forget seeing that security card and the Planned Parenthood logo on it and her name and clinic director on there and everything just covered in her mascara from bawling. That is the image that, that sticks with me. She just looked down. There were three of us there and she had already told us her story and she was bawling and she sort of almost screamed, I am sorry, I am so sorry just for, for having work there. And, and I said, I'm meeting you tomorrow at 11 a.m. The place I wanted to meet her was the office of Dr. Haywood Robinson. And Haywood is a longtime pro-life advocate. He is from Los Angeles. He and his wife, both physicians, both African-American and both former abortion providers. And he was an integral part in 40 Days for Life early days and, and especially now and he's my friend my phone rings and I see on the ID that it's a Sean Carney so I gotta pick up this call because he's always got something important to say and he's got that excited sound in his voice he says you won't believe what just happened Abby Johnson just walked in the office and I had to sit down it was uh, I just couldn't believe it uh, he says, yes, uh, she's, come, she's come into our office. She came through the back door, and uh, we've been talking with her, and I'd like to bring her by uh, to meet you. And I said, sure, you know, I, I, please bring her by. So the, the day after she walked out, uh, Sean brought her to my office. And we met at 11 o'clock, and I remember Abby showing up. I said, we're going to meet Dr. Haywood Robinson. He's a former abortion provider. He's been where you've been and I think it's a good person for you to talk to. There was somewhat of an element of fear in her eyes because she, financially, what she's going to do? What is this evil corporation going to do to me? What do I do next? A lot of unknowns. But she, that was the exact place for God to really move. We visited, I spoke to her um, as a former uh, uh, abortionist who's been in a situation where I had a relationship with a director and how you interact in a one of those abortion facilities we had encouraging words we prayed and uh, 
that's where our friendship started. And I was so thankful at that point for my friendship with Haywood. He's just always, he had always been my friend. And there's just a certain point, I can't relate to Abby. You know, I, I would have never gone near a Planned Parenthood. I would have never worked at a Planned Parenthood. I would have never understood working there. I would have never gone into a POC lab and, and seen a dismembered baby and not jumped out the window and sprinted down the street and run to the police station. I just, I can't relate to that. And I don't pretend to. There was a cap on what I could do for Abby. And there was a limit because I hadn't been there. And Haywood's been there. He's gone to the depths of, of that hell. And I was so grateful that God had somehow put in College Station, Texas, this former abortion provider for this moment. That speaks to the heart of the pro-life movement. It's not a movement made up of a bunch of self-righteous Christians trying to tell everybody how to live and force their religion on people. It's a movement of converts. It's a movement of hope. You know, 40 days is um, modeled on scripture, and that's why it works. You know, it, it's uh, 40 days of prayer and fasting, and you can't go wrong with that. I mean, that's, that is a model for success based on God's word. 40 Days for Life just brought a beautiful model of prayer and fasting to the sidewalk. The reason I love 40 Days for Life is because it is a way to get the church out of the building onto the street. Today, we face a crisis like none other in history. It's a crisis that attacks science, faith, and family. It's a crisis that is hurting women and dehumanizing the most innocent and beautiful among us. That crisis is abortion. Abortion has now become the leading cause of death throughout our entire world with nearly 56 million every year. Here in the United States, every single year, one million innocent children perish from abortion. I realized that abortion is um, the worst thing I think that could happen, and this is a way for us to get involved. You know, it's a way for us to do something. You feel so helpless uh, uh, with abortion, like there's nothing you can do, and 40 Days for Life gives you a way to do something practical. I've always known as a physician and as a scientist that life begins at conception it totally makes sense to me just as an apple seed grows into an apple tree that when an egg and sperm come together that that grows into a human being that is alive and walking around it took a long time for me to get to actually praying outside of the abortion centers but the minute that i started doing it God really moved me so that there's no way I could ever possibly walk away from it. I just truly believe that we need to be peaceful and loving. And that is the only way these mothers have chosen life because they've seen that. 40 Days for Life is about bringing hope into our world of darkness. Abortion ends the life of a defenseless human being. And it doesn't do so in, on the bench of the Supreme Court or in some senator's office or in the middle of a presidential debate on NBC. It happens in our neighborhoods, in unassuming areas around the corner from our, our churches, our schools, our favorite restaurants. In 1998, Planned Parenthood opened an abortion center in Bryan College Station, Texas. People of faith rallied against it. But in time, the facility was built and Planned Parenthood opened. In 2004, four people gathered around an old wooden table for an hour of prayer. During that hour of prayer, they found themselves drawn to the time frame of 40 days. As that hour of prayer progressed, the four individuals found themselves called to launch a 40-day campaign of prayer and fasting, community outreach, and a constant peaceful vigil to end abortion. Finally, they gave their new project a name, 
entrusting this effort to that biblical time frame God uses to transform hearts and culture. They called it 40 Days for Life. In the years to come, communities across the United States launched their own campaigns. In 2007, the original 40 Days for Life leaders launched their first ever 40 Days for Life campaign, spanning 89 cities in 33 states. Before long, campaigns had been hosted in all 50 states. Then, the world came knocking. Today, over 750 cities in 50 countries have hosted 40 Days for Life campaigns. Volunteer leaders standing together in prayerful solidarity. Many cultures, many time zones, many languages, but one shared language of prayer. I like the way that the whole world is praying at the same time for the same reason, just together. And from different countries, many countries, and we are forming this, uh, the body of Christ together. Well, I think it's immensely important to know that there's people around the world who are um, on fire for the same cause, uh, that believe the same things, that hold sacred life. Um, it's really, I think, uh, scary to go out on your own. Um, we're, we're a people who rely on community, on, on, um, on being part of, of, of something good. And, um, and I think it's been really helpful in New Zealand, especially because we can feel very isolated in the world um, uh, down, down under, uh, to know that there's so many people around so many cities around the, the world that, um, that are doing this all at the same time. Is, uh, it makes it so much easier for people to consider putting themselves out there, uh, that they know they're not alone, that they know that there's, um, there's support. I believe in 40 Days for Life because this struggle against abortion is going to be win just when we give women the support uh, emotionally and spiritual and when we give them love everything can change 40 days for life has contributed to a groundswell of pro-life support worldwide abortion centers where campaigns have been hosted have closed their doors forever including the very location where 40 Days for Life first began in 2004, the now-closed Planned Parenthood abortion facility in Bryan College Station, Texas. The building where thousands of lives were taken has been redeemed and now serves as the international headquarters for 40 Days for Life, showing what God can do in any community. You know, it was Abby Johnson. This isn't an accuracy of the movie. In the movie, I call Abby to tell her that this place was closing. And they changed it for a couple of reasons, or it worked in the movie. But the, the real story is that she called me to tell me. And then I picked up the phone and I confirmed it. And I, I remember sitting in my office so thankful. I was elated. That was awesome. I ran in. I told Mary Lisa by then I think we had five kids. Like, we <laughs> time had passed. But... I remember sitting back thinking, so the woman who ran my Planned Parenthood abortion facility and left is the one that called and told me that it was closing and she was grateful and ecstatic. And that is a, only a story that God can write, but it's a story that our cynical world often doesn't trust will happen and they need to trust that it can happen. It happened here, it's happened other places, and it can happen where you live. It was just, it was just, it was pure God. I, we, we had turned to God in this 40 days of fasting, uh, you know, just constant, this chain of prayer uh, for 40 days straight, and seven weeks later, the place is closed. I think that's the story out of Las Cruces, is that you can do this through your faith, through our faith, and through our Lord, that he can, he can end abortion in spite of all odds. During those three, four days of life campaigns, nearly 7,000 children lost their lives. Nearly 7,000 mothers were injured and scarred for life from the abortion that they had at the facility. But because people like you and me decided to come out and pray and fast, this place closed. I remember very well the day that our Planned Parenthood here in Storm Lake, Iowa closed. A friend called me up and said, hey, did you hear the news? And we had just completed our first ever 40 Days for Life campaign outside uh, of the place that I used to work. 
And to hear that it was gonna close, I was just stunned. And of course, that's what we prayed for, um, for 480 hours in front of Planned Parenthood, was that it would close. But yet when it happened, I was absolutely stunned. So I remember thinking, this is too good to be true. And we ended up having this great party, or celebrating our, the Planned Parenthood facility closing. But stunning to me that God heard and answered our prayers. And I can tell you that if he did that for us here, he can do that uh, anywhere. We were number 21 that closed after 40 Days for Life, and what a great day it was. Well, let's really give the Lord a thanks. Thank you, God. Yeah. 40 Days for Life works because God hears our prayers, and we must never give up on that. Many more abortion facilities are yet to close. There is so much good right now in the pro-life movement despite nearly 50 years of legalized abortion. And I think that speaks to the nature of the abortion debate. It hasn't gone away. You don't forget about your abortion. It isn't just no big deal, as Planned Parenthood says. That's why the pro-life movement has so many, you know, women who have had an abortion or men who have participated in abortion or, or doctors who have done abortions. The conversion gate has only swung in one direction the last 50 years. There aren't people that started or led, you know, pro-life organizations that all of a sudden looked up and said, I need to be running an abortion facility. You know, there aren't moms that raised their kids and said, what, what have I been doing? I was running a pregnancy resource center and now I, I need to be running a Planned Parenthood and I need to apologize to everybody, repent, write a book, go on the speaking tour. Those, those stories aren't out there. It's only swung in one direction, and that is good. And the United States is leading the way for ending abortion. Sue is the manager of a Planned Parenthood facility in Storm Lake, Iowa. After leaving her job at Planned Parenthood in a time of healing, decided to lead a 40 Days for Life campaign outside of her former workplace. Here I was pro-choice and the leader of Planned Parenthood, and now suddenly, you know, I've crossed over and I'm, I'm leading the, the other charge. I am their biggest fan. You know, they have done amazing things across the country, not only to stop abortion, but to bring people together, you know, in the pro-life movement and, you know, to open dialogue and, and get things going. And it has truly been one of the greatest blessings of my life. I imagine, I look back and think, what would it have been like if someone was not there the day that I walked out and asked for prayers? If they hadn't been there, I wouldn't be here. So, you know, that's that's what you have to remember is that your presence is necessary, even though you may not think that it is. I'm a former abortion facility worker and a post-abortive mom and a suicide attempt survivor. So I've gone through a long transition of first choosing life for myself and then recognizing that abortion was wrong and becoming pro-life. It is so important that people are out on the sidewalk peacefully, prayerfully, and law-abiding witnessing in front of these abortion facilities because the people inside need to know that people care about them, not just the misguided mothers who are, you know, heading into the chambers of death, but also the people who work there. They don't want to be there either. And when they know how much we care about them, maybe they'll know that we're safe people. They can come to us and they can change their minds. I think that we should be thankful for 40 Days for Life. It is a beautiful campaign that is, um, has the ability to bridge, make, build bridges between so many different people. And when you're looking for something that's um, effective, uh, this, this campaign is probably, you, you see so many beautiful fruits come out of this, not just um, babies saved and mothers spared but also uh, so many former um, employees who work at these uh, facilities who have left after a 40 Days for Life campaign. I think it's important for the abortion facility workers to see 40 Days for Life uh, participants and anyone praying outside of an abortion clinic, for them to know that people care about strangers. People care about these women coming in. The, the workers, the doctors are going to see these women for five, ten minutes, and then that's it. You know, for the workers looking outside and seeing you there day after day, week after week, year after year, that kind of dedication is going to make an impression on them. And maybe not today, and maybe not tomorrow, 
But the folks on the sidewalk, please, I mean, they gotta know you're gonna be planting seeds. Knowing that there, there was going to be a campaign out front of my facility filled with people who are prayerful and peaceful. I think that's what made it so approachable for me to see that they truly were prayerful and peaceful people. Every vigil participant signs the 40 Days for Life Statement of Peace. So when we're outside and people see us, they know that we are the loving alternative to the death that's being offered inside and that we will be here and we will be compassionate. There's no judgment. There's no harassment. It's just loving these women out of the culture of death. You know, the, the mindset that a staff member at Planned Parenthood gets into is very difficult. Um, you know, there, there's goals for every single thing that they do, every, every kind of birth control pill, pregnancy tests, abortions, there's goals, you know, for every number. And so it, you're very driven, you know, to hit your goal. And, and, uh, and Planned Parenthood is, you know, their business model is making money. The abortion industry thrives on money. It, the fuel is money. If you subtract the variable of money out of abortion, it would, it would go away. So even though you look at this torn up baby uh, that you're having to piece together to make sure that you emptied the uterus, you, uh, you listen or you hear the, the devil, you may be seeing, saying that uh, uh, in a sub-vocal or subconscious way, but you say, no, that's not a baby. That's products of conception. It's, 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 and, but sometimes that's all you need to keep, to keep going is a little, a little bit of deception. The Lord uh, uh, rescued me, saved me, I went from darkness into light. And one of the first things that my wife and I were convicted of was our past work uh, in abortion. And it did hurt to finally get the revelation of how bad what you were doing was. But the Lord has a way of healing your heart and, and he does not look back at your sin and, 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 and wave it in your face. The abortion facility workers who had conversions and quit their jobs show us that with God, all things are possible. Even ending abortion right where you live. 40 Days for Life is peaceful. It is law abiding. It, it does, you know, extend a hand and invite people. And you definitely see that in the movie. Abby was the 26th abortion facility worker who's had a conversion and left during a 40 Days for Life campaign. There have been so far nearly 200. There's hope as polls now show that the majority of people reject abortion, especially young people. Many women who are going into the abortion clinic, when they see our presence, when they see our kind signs, when they see our kind smiles, they choose life because they see, they see the hope that there is. And we're not only here to show them the hope in choosing life, but we're here to give them resources to say, we are here for you. We are here to walk alongside of you. And 40 Days gives us the gift of an avenue to be able to rally around the church and to help them to see that it is not a personal calling of myself or my mom, but it is truly a demand of the Lord to be a voice for those who have no voice. You can literally save lives where you live. I've seen God work in the campaign in many different ways, and the obvious way is the turnarounds. Um, many turnarounds you never get to meet again. The ones that you do get to meet often and ongoing, where you hold those babies in your arms, all the abuse, all the persecution, all the problems are worth it well and truly when you hold a little baby and you have a mother with tears in her eyes saying thank you. This elderly man had been praying uh, in front of the facility and the woman did not um, go through with the procedure. And when uh, her daughter, was seven years old, she was reunited with, with that man. Can you imagine how encouraging that is for him to see this seven-year-old child who, and the first time he met her was inside the belly of this woman? Can you imagine how thankful that mother is now? Can you imagine how encouraging the uh, co-prayers with this elderly man 
where it just makes you, makes you want to do more. Thousands of babies have been saved from abortion, including a baby girl whose mom was pressured to abort because her daughter would be born with no legs. Going in for the abortion, her mom saw 40 Days for Life volunteers and knew she didn't want to do this to her daughter. Those volunteers helped her get free medical care and gave her the support she needed to choose life. When her daughter was born, she named her Milagros, which means miracle. Forty Days for Life is an invitation to trust God, to take a leap of faith, to join the one million people who have participated in this effort. It's just, you know, life is all there is. And if we can't stand up and defend life, there's nothing else. You know, it's, it's the most important thing that anybody will ever do. And it, it's worth it. I feel like this is the most amazing peaceful, loving way to truly help women and to save babies. And I think that's an immensely powerful witness to our community um, to say we're there, we care, uh, and you know, uh, we're willing to do what it takes to help you to choose life. I believe in 40 Days for Life because I've seen the power of prayer and fasting. I've seen miracles on the sidewalk. Now it's time for us to trust him. It's time to put our faith into action. And it's time to take this moment in history and to make it the beginning of the end of abortion. Find the location nearest you at 40daysforlife.com.